Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be installing the ATI Super Damper on my Honda K-Series. This ATI Super Damper replaces the OE crank pulley. So how does the ATI Super Damper work? There's a front cover with a metal inertia ring on the back, which is surrounded by elastomer bands to help reduce the twisting forces on the crankshaft, essentially counteracting the forces that are applied on the crankshaft. This dampens harmonics and vibrations within your motor, and therefore, it's a power adder. That's why you'll always see one of these ATI Super Dampers on one of my race motors. If you'd like to learn more about the ATI Super Damper, there's some great technical articles on www.atiracing.com. I've seen lots of videos on YouTube where people are trying to install the ATI Super Damper by smacking it on with a mallet or forcing it on with a crank bolt. That is not the proper way to install the ATI Super Damper. Also, no one ever really talks about how to remove the ATI Super Damper once it's installed. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the tools required and how to properly install and remove the ATI Super Damper. Let's get started. For the ATI Super Damper to dampen the harmonics and vibrations with the engine, it was designed with a slight press fit. Therefore, you will need one of these two tools. This is the ATI 918999, and this is the Proform 66514. These tools are almost identical and both function as an installer and puller. Let's take a closer look at these tools. They both come with base plates. They both come with center shafts and drive nuts. They also come with three crankshaft adapters, but the key to these particular tools is they were designed for domestics and not imports. So I designed this crankshaft adapter specifically for the K-Series. It fits the K20, K24, and it also fits the F-Series. Additionally, you will need a Torx T40 Plus bit. And I want you guys to realize this is not a Torx bit. It is a Torx T40 Plus bit. They are different. Please don't use a regular Torx bit because it will mess up the bolts in your ATI Super Damper. Also, you will need some 5 16 inch hardware, and I've bundled these items together, and they are available on the website as well. To remove the OE crankshaft pulley, we'll use a 19 millimeter socket, but we're not just gonna use any socket. We're gonna use the Lyle harmonic balancer socket. It makes things a lot easier. Check it out. Pops it right off. Prior to removing the OE crankshaft pulley, make sure you pay particular attention to this key right here. Sometimes when you pull this guy off, the key will fall and you'll lose it. So I'm gonna use both my hands. I'm just gonna pull this guy off, give it a little wiggle. And again, be careful that you don't lose the key. So let's talk about the key real quick. I'm gonna remove this key, but I want you to note that it is rectangular in shape. So it'll only fit in this direction, or if you flip it 180. If you flip it 90, it won't fit, watch. Look, it won't fit that way. It's, it won't fit in there, it's just too big. So you just gotta make sure you rotate it the correct way, and there it fits good. So now, I'm gonna remove this so that way we don't lose it, and I'll set it aside for just a second. There are two options for the ATI Super Damper for the K-Series. This is the street version, part number 918477, and it has all the accommodations for power steering and AC. The race version is 918478, and there is no accommodations for power steering or AC. For the ATI Super Damper to reduce the harmonics and vibrations within the engine, it is designed with a press fit. The tools allow the ATI Super Damper to be installed and pulled concentrically without damage. If you don't use an installer puller tool, there is a risk you will damage the crank snout, the crank key, the ATI Super Damper ID, or the ATI Super Damper keyway. Now we're gonna remove the three center bolts, and that is using a Torx T40 Plus bit. I'm gonna use my gun to remove those. Now we're gonna attach the flat part of the base plate to the ATI damper using the 5 16 inch hardware in the holes that we just uncovered. With the base plate still loose, I'm gonna move it around and I'm gonna center it based on the ID of the ATI super damper. Once I have it aligned, I'm gonna snug these guys down by hand. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of motor oil to the ID 
of the ATI super damper and along this leading edge right here. Then I'm gonna lubricate the crank snout just like this and this leading edge right here. Followed by installing the key. Make sure it's the correct orientation. And then I'm gonna install the crankshaft adapter. The crankshaft adapter does not have to be installed tight. It just needs to be snug. Adjust your drive nut so that way the drive nut is closest to this pointy end here. Here's the back of the ATI super damper and notice that's where the keyway is. We're gonna try and line this keyway with the crankshaft key right there. Once it's aligned, we wanna make sure that it doesn't move. Without moving the ATI super damper, we wanna install the center shaft under the crankshaft adapter. Once the center shaft bottoms out, we'll screw the drive nut as far as it'll go. And we're gonna get it snug, just by hand. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hang on to the center shaft with a 19 millimeter socket, and I like to use a breaker bar so it doesn't move. We wanna keep this thing as still as possible, and then we're gonna use a 27 millimeter wrench to drive the drive nut, and that essentially presses the ATI damper onto the crank snout, and you'll know when you've gone enough because the ATI damper will bottom out. And it just bottomed out. To remove the tool, let's remove the base plate first by backing out these 5 16 inch bolts. Then we're gonna back out the drive nut just a little bit. Now we remove the center shaft. Sometimes the crankshaft adapter will come out with the tool, but if it doesn't, just use a 3 quarter inch socket and just back it out. To finish the installation, lock the flywheel, and then we're gonna install these three bolts using blue Loctite and a Torx T40 Plus bit, and we're gonna to torque those down to 16 foot-pounds. Then we'll install the crank bolt using factory torque specs and a 19 millimeter socket. To remove the ATI super damper, it's pretty simple. We're still gonna use these three open holes here, and we'll have to reinstall the crankshaft adapter, and we're just gonna put that in by hand. Then we're gonna take the tool and we're gonna switch the orientation of the base plate. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna flip it to the other side, just like that. With our new configuration, we're gonna attach the center shaft to the crankshaft adapter. And again, we're just gonna snug it down by hand. Now I'm gonna take the drive nut and I'm gonna rotate this guy in until this section until this ID here almost touches the ATI super damper. There. So it's not actually touching the ATI super damper yet. Now we're gonna rotate our base plate so that way we can install our 5 16 inch hardware. So it's really important right now that we install our hardware so there's at least one D. One D meaning one diameter's worth of thread engagement. So that's 5 16 at least of thread engagement and all of these have to be at the exact same level. So I'm gonna take these guys down and know that there's at least 5 16 worth of thread engagement. Get them down in equal amount. Similar to installation, we're gonna hold the center shaft still and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the drive nut counterclockwise and this will actually pull the ATI super damper off and it's, the key is it's gonna pull it off concentrically and not damage our ATI super damper or the crank snout. So don't worry about the ATI super falling off once it is off the crank snout because the center shaft is still attached to the crankshaft adapter. Let's remove the base plate first by removing the 5 16 inch hardware. So here's where you need to be careful. Once we release this thing, you gotta hang on to this ATI super damper so that way it doesn't fall off. Now I'm just gonna back out the center shaft and let's see if we get lucky if the crankshaft adapter comes out with it it did not, but no problem. And you just take this thing out by hand, and that's the removal. I know some people are gonna ask, is it possible to remove or install the ATI super damper in car? Well, the answer is yes, but it depends on your application. Typically what I'll do is I'll support the bottom of the motor with a jack, and I'll remove three of the engine mounts so that way I could lower this section down, and then I'll remove the wheel, and then I could access 
the ATI Super Damper and I could install the tool and I could either install this or I could remove the ATI Super Damper. And honestly, that's really its one downfall is that you need to use the tool to install it properly because it is a press fit. But I still think that it is worth it because of the benefit. And again, the benefit is the ATI Super Damper reduces harmonics and vibrations with your engine, and that for sure is a power adder. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you on the track.